Hello there, how are you doing? I'm just going to read out some um, some fans' letters here that they've wrote to uh, Roker Report, which is quite interesting. Um, I wrote in a week or so regarding the recruitment model being aimed at um, profit and not pr practically, i.e. hanging our hopes on Joe Gelhard, but also signing wide players when we have plenty of them in the squad. Although I'm all in for bringing quality in, it's a bit of a head scratcher, isn't it? Uh, the responses came thick and fast that we should be happy as we are in League One last year. Although personally, feel we're pretty much cruising towards the Championship playoffs with a fit Ross Stewart. Gelhard's inclusion appears to be under severe threat, though. Where will he be replaced by a non-specialist striker? There's a difference between criticism and realism. And every man and his dog can see where we're struggling on the field, it's obvious. I don't think our recruitment model is poor though, but I do think profit seems to come before practicality, especially if January is anything to go by. We signed Danny Bath in January 2022, so older players don't necessarily equal power players and Corey Evans is another case in point. Next season will be the acid test because if we continue as a mid-table championship side, fans will start to turn and I've seen people on social media already talking about sacking Tony Mowbray. The club, the side and the setup are so many components that are ready to progress so as a statement of intent we need to see recruitment that enables us to challenge for promotion next season and that's from a, from a fan call at Dean Hardy um, another guy uh, my name is Neil Hamilton I'm a 60 year old avid Sunland fan living in Australia I love your work by the way I'd like to comment on the goal incident from Wednesday night's game. I know the referee didn't have a good game against Sheffield United, but having watched the free kick many times, I have to say his view of the offside wasn't very good at all, as we all know that. Having said that, the linesman who's supposed to be there to police the offside rule was an absolute disgrace all game. I mean, how on earth he managed to miss two players being about a foot, two foot offside is just beggar's belief when some referees can get, you know, an eyelash offside, the flag guns up. I just don't understand it. In my opinion, his, his decision not to, to flag makes him a cheat and he should never, ever be employed by the FA or the AFL ever again. One question, one question I do have is, if the referee apologised to Tony Mowbray after the final whistle, when did he realise he made the wrong decision? In my opinion, the sooner VAR is used in the Championship, the better. There's a lot of... That's from Neil Hammond. There's a lot of um, fans asking for that. It, it should have been in years ago. And it's it's just not fair. The Premier League having VAR and the Championship not. As a matter of fact, the whole the whole leagues should have it as well. So yeah, there's some good points there. Um, I don't work for Walker Report, by the way. I'm just uh, reading some of the letters out um, so people can see what's been been going on. So yeah, there we are. Like I say, there's some there's some good points there. So, catch us later. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And we'll catch you later for some more news and banter. See you later.